Good evening, everyone. Um, this is the Board of Finance regular audit subcommittee committee meeting for Tuesday, July 7th. It's 6 o'clock, uh, and this is via WebEx, so we are being recorded. Um, we have a short agenda, but also we only have one hour to accomplish it. Um, so um, I think we'll pass on the Pledge of Allegiance, if that's okay, and we'll save that for the Board of Finance meeting. Um, so we'll jump down to, and I'd like to take things out of order. Um, if Brenda Kupchick is on the line, she would like to address us first. Um, so I'd like to give her that opportunity. Are you here, Brenda? I don't see. Uh, I don't see Brenda you see her? on there. Okay. But okay, she is so going to be at the board of finance meeting, and, and we can give her an opportunity to speak there. Okay, that's great. And if she jumps on here, we will um, let her speak. <laughs> okay. So then we'll keep the order going and. Uh, um, well, maybe so we can free up Joe for a little bit. Let's skip to item number four, um, or do you want to do the minutes first? Does anyone have a preference? Um, well, let's do the minutes. So to hear and consider the following meeting minutes for October 29th, 2019, December 3rd, 2019, February 5th, 2020, February 25th, 2020, uh, and June 4th, 2020, and June 23rd, 2020. Uh, Mary, I, um, I think, I think um, just to clarify, I cannot vote on October 29th. I was not at that meeting. Um, that was before okay. my time. Maybe we do those separately okay. for you. So we can take each one to approve it separately. Um, I can't recall, um, because Jim was on and off, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I check um, it out. Sorry, Mary, this is Jim. I was there in October. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll take a motion to um, accept the October minutes. Uh, okay. And I will second that. Um, all in favor? So. Two in favor, one abstention. Um, for the December, sorry, December 3rd, 2019 minutes, I'll take a motion to approve. Um, Jim and I will second it. Um, all in favor? Um, to, can Jim can and I, I just, I'm sorry, sorry, just a question. I, I apologize. There were some. There was something in the minutes I didn't understand. Um, maybe if, if it makes sense to you guys, then we can just approve them. But on the second page, well, we second paragraph says, Mr. Centifani noticed, noted best practices was solid waste and recycling. I, I just, I don't recall that discussion. I'm, I'm not really sure what that means in this context. Does that ring a bell? Um. It's been so long, not, not really, but should we just hold over those minutes and we can go back and review? Yeah, I, 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 would, I think we might want to clarify this. That the first two paragraphs on that page, I, I wasn't able to understand what, what the context was as I read them. So um, I didn't go, have a chance to go back and listen to, uh, and, and actually, I don't know, was this, this meeting probably wasn't recorded, was it? No, I don't believe so. Um, I mean, Joe does, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to Joe, or we could move on and approve the rest of them. I just, okay. I, you know, I don't, I don't know what those, those uh, passages mean. Okay. Which, which paragraphs were they worth? Well, um, in particular, this, so on page two of the December 3rd minutes, um, you know, the first paragraph states, Mr. Mayor said there are two parts to the pile. Part one is the initial finding, which then shut it down and the berm was filled. Part two, I mean, it's a little jumbled. I don't really know what that means, but I'll, okay. 
I could pass by that. It's really the second paragraph. It says, Mr. Centifani noted best practices was solid waste and recycling. He will give his okay. best practices recommendations to put right controls in place. Then Mr. Mayor and Ms. Saxel will decide how to best implement. I just, the whole best practice on solid waste and recycling, I'm not sure if that's an accurate statement, especially given the audit report we got or if that was misinterpreted somehow. I just, I just don't know what it means. So that was one part right. I thought. I, I think it's referring to the future report, but I can go back and see if I can figure it out. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Are there any questions on the February 5th minutes? Um, the only question I had was we had Ed in my role switched, and I noticed that we re-voted at the following meeting. So did we re-vote to correct these, this, or is this a mistake on February 5th? Uh, well, what were the, what did we vote to? I thought, yeah, Ed motioned for you as chair, me as vice chair, himself as secretary, and we voted on that unit. I so I think that just right. should be corrected in both the members present and then the bolded paragraph a couple below. That's all I had on that right. one. Yeah, I thought I corrected that with Jen, but um, it didn't make its way to the minutes. Okay. Okay, so we'll, why don't we pass on that one too? Okay. Um, okay, so flipping over to February 25th, are there questions? No. Okay. All right, so I'll take a motion to approve. Um, Lori and um, I'll second it. All in favor? Um, Lori and I and Jim, do you abstain? Abstain. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm on to June 4th. Um, are there any questions with the minutes? Um, okay, I'll take a motion to approve. Uh, Jim, I'll, I'll second it. Are there any questions? All in favor? That's unanimous, all three of us. Um, okay, and then on to the last one, June 23rd. Are there any questions on the minutes? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve. Uh, Lori, Jim will second it. All in favor? Um, that that also is unanimous. Um, so those motion, those minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. Um, so now we'll go to item four on our agenda, which is the review and discussion um, for the Town of Fairfield Public Works Department review report. Um, the results of the procedures, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Um, procedures um, performed and to make recommendations to the Board of Finance at the July 7th Board of Finance meeting. Um, okay, so we had previously started to discuss this report, which we will probably be discussing for quite some time. Um, and I guess we had some que questions for Mr. Sensifani and maybe some follow-up items for Ms. Saxel. Um, so I, I don't know if anyone wants to start us off or should I? I had sent Joe some questions that, from our last meeting and asked him if he would be prepared to discuss them. Um, so. So um, I guess we were looking for um, Joe to explain um, ha the, the priority system that he that we requested that he put into the report, um, and there was a question. Um, so do we want 
Can you give us a little bit of an overview on your thoughts on how you pri prioritize the report? Sure. So, I, I, you know, probably the internal control items are going to be the higher priority items. So I would base that on uh, the level of internal controls. So if there were some controls, I might it might not be a one, or if there's compensating controls, or uh, in some in some cases, I may base the priority based upon, we'll say, materiality or how big, how much the activity is. So. Again, that's just my 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 interpretation of that based upon the information I have. I and mean, as far as how the town decides to prioritize what they fix, it certainly could be different. I mean, when we just you know look at public works number one D. I mean, I, I made it two because there are some controls in place. It's not like there's no controls, so I didn't make it a one. Uh, yeah, K. Okay. It was more of an efficiency issue because the reports can be produced. Um, just I think the best practice is that finance can produce them themselves or, or have access themselves at any time. But uh, the reports are generated actually by the Parks and Rec Department and balanced and that type of thing. I'm not sure. I don't think they get sent over to finance with the deposit, but, but that information is available. So I, I didn't. Uh, that as much of a control issue because there is a process in place. Uh, in some cases, I think it's practice that finance can run a report and then check things on their own or internal audit or, or that type of thing. So, so the recommendation more is like an additional control versus being the only control. So I rated it lower. It certainly can be uh, can be uh, viewed as a higher number, but you know, in most um, communities, Park and Rec is probably running the report and sending it to finance. But best practice would be that finance can spot check or can run their own reports to make sure um, that the reports they're getting is the same information that's in, in, in the system. Laurie? The control, I'll say deficiencies and and okay. the materiality of the issue, which makes sense. Um, <clears throat> we probably, yeah, I, I think everyone that looks at this might think about priority of some of these a little bit differently. In my mind, I I tended to focus on the ones where I, I thought there was a potential financial impact. Um, you know, cash cash collections, for example, and when I say cash, I mean cash, cash, you know, if cash is being accepted um, in a department for services or permits or things like that, I'm, that's not a good practice, particularly when we don't have reconciliations and appropriate controls around it. So, you know, we, we can, we'll figure that out as we go along, but broadly, um, as I stepped back and looked at this whole thing, what jumped out to me at least was purchasing broadly uh, and you know two things one you I'll, I'll find the page number here but I think you had uh, 18 bullet points of areas where we should consider updates to our current purchasing policy actually it's on page 42 of my draft so it's it looks like our, our purchasing policy is um, I'll say deficient for back, lack of a better term. It, it needs to address a number of different items that it currently doesn't address. Um, we don't really have process and documentation around how we follow the current policy. So, for example, we, we require co quotes, but we don't maintain them. You know, there's, there's, there's not a good way to follow up on things to make sure the policy has been adhered to. Um, and then thirdly, aside from the, you know, the policy we do have isn't being followed clearly, right? You had a fairly high exception rate in the test work you did where documentation was um, in some cases, I think, missing or questionable or um, 
it, it appeared that, um, you know, purchases might have been um, made in small amounts to, you know, just below a threshold requirement to get a quota or a bid. So there's there a lot of things around purchasing, I guess. So if if you were us <laughs> and and you had, a, you know, an area of concern that, that you think the town should dive into as a high priority. I mean, I, I look at several of the controls around cash, you know, cash collections and reconciliations, I think are quite important, but purchasing area, the whole purchasing area broadly seemed problematic. Um, would you, you know, is, is that a reasonable take or, or would you look at it differently? Yeah, no, I think that's that's reasonable. I mean, cash is always the first stop, but then purchasing, just you know, the policy itself is just kind of short, and it kind of probably really hasn't evolved with with the town and the type of like, level of activity that's going on. And again, just a lot of what I found was there was no standard documentation requirement. I've seen other places that I've, I've designed for other places, and. And it, and it kept coming back that people just really weren't educated about the policy. That, and there was a lot of, uh, uh, here's the invoice. How does this fit into the purchasing policy? So, I mean, everybody, everyone I talked to mentioned that. So that's not something, it was something that was known. You know, I, and I think purchasing only had a limited amount of ability because uh, something was already purchased uh, to manage that. So things were happening outside the purchasing department and, and, and that could be with the PO process needs to be stricter or, or something. What's the authorization to purchase? Normally it's the PO. If that doesn't happen and the invoice already shows up, then we do the PO. Well, obviously the purchasing wasn't in the loop until after. So I, I think that. Should, and then, and yeah. Should everything be flowing through purchasing? So no matter what you're, purchasing in some form, should that be going through the purchasing department? No, I mean, there, there's things like utilities, there, there's certain things or memberships or that type of thing. If it's in the budget, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to do a purchase order just to do a purchase order because if you budget right. the utilities, you only charge um, utilities for that line. So, so not everything, but it's just things that are purchased or, or, or the purchase order is, is, is acting as the authorization. Somebody said, okay, go right. buy this. Uh, that doesn't happen. With, so the things that don't are purchased that way wouldn't necessarily you know, be used a purchase order. But I think that part of what was happening is the process was out of order. I bought it. Not now I purchasing is trying to do the best they can to say, okay, well, we have a process and then people aren't aware. And then, okay, so maybe they went and got quotes. Again, they're doing a better job today retaining them than, than they were, but you know, I looked at several years. So I think, you know, as a, a attention was put on that, it improved. But, but again, without a formal standard documentation requirement, it's hard to educate people. And then you have multiple people and if we just pick public works doing this. So one of my recommendations kind of like, you just probably really want to, centralized that. So why is there four different people uh, managing the purchasing process in the purchasing department? I mean, I know there's different departments and there's different secretaries or A's that support people, but it, it, it's clearly not working because everyone's doing something different. So so that's yeah. where you know this list came in as far as these are the things that should be there and it should be standard documentation and there should be training on this is how we do it. So does that mean more resources in purchasing? I, I, I don't know. If you talk to them, uh, the volume is, 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 is quite a bit, and, and some of it has to do with thresholds. So you know, that's why I'd say, okay, re re revisit the threshold, look at what your purchasing is, what do you need, at what level, that affects the volume, and, and then the resources that are managing that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Let me let me ask you two two other questions. So we had when we first went down this road for the audit, the audit, and this was before my time, but the scope of the audit was set 
uh, to cover certain things. And we said, let's get through this, kind of figure out what we're dealing with. We may have a phase two, depending on the results of phase one. Um, if, if a focus on purchasing uh, was sort of a phase two project, what, um, what role could your firm play? Um, so in terms of assisting in developing uh, improvements to the policy or reviewing the policy or, you know, helping develop process and procedures around a revised policy, is that something that uh, you do? Um, do you do it, do you do primary work on that or do you just review, um, you know, things that clients put together? I mean, can you just maybe give us a little feel, feel about that? All right. And so it's definitely both of those. I've developed policies, you know, purchasing debt, capital, multiple working policies from ground zero, looking at best practices and, and that type of thing. And, and I, I, I'm actually, I'm asked all the time to review policies that people already have written or that type of thing. And then, because I, I probably look at it more with the internal control versus the process. So a lot of times if it's done internally, it's more focused on process. And then I would uh, give them, well, here's some internal controls. Here's the documentation. What about this? Again, because I, in addition to the regular audits, I do a lot of other consulting projects so I see what goes wrong and so I have that uh, I try to add that perspective of how, how can we tighten this up and how can we make sure that the, the documentation is, is at a level that somebody can look at it and, and be comfortable so so I can do either I can help with all these items I mean this is from some of these items are listed in these 18 items or from a policy that I developed for another municipality, much smaller, but these are the things that I put in that policy. And again, there could be more. I just started with here's, there's a lot to look at, but here's some things I think are important. Again, and knowing just kind of the education process and a lot of people just said, well, I didn't understand the process and purchasing confirmed that departments didn't understand the process and, and they were spending a lot of time trying to educate about the process versus just doing the monitoring that people are there to do. Um, yeah, so it seems like, okay, so process is one, or policy is one thing, training around the policy and the process and procedures around it is obviously an area where we've been lacking. Um, and then just to clarify, the actual testing, you, um, you have 2017, 18, and 19. So these are the fiscal years. So you went through June 30th, 2019, is that correct? Right, yep. Okay. Um, and it's, it sounds like, and maybe Connie wants to weigh in here too, just through the process of asking questions and gathering information, you know, the individuals you were working with, you know, may have become aware of things and, and, you know, made improvements or fixed things along the way. Um, are there any, um, Connie, is there anything notable that you're aware of that's changed um, versus what's kind of in here? Well, we have uh, reviewed the audit report and uh, in finance, and we've determined that there are 14 areas where there were uh, improvements and recommendations had been adhered to. So um, I don't know if you're aware, but the first select woman has established uh, a working group of uh, finance members, director of purchasing, public works, uh, superintendent, human resources. And um, we met for the first time on July 1st. And uh, we are taking the audit report very seriously. We've, um, we will be meeting on a regular basis to review the recommendations that Joe made in the audit report. And we're going to determine how we will address these recommendations. And um, right now we're in the process of identifying the recommendations and identifying the ones that um, have already been addressed and the ones that we deem uh, should have, be addressed immediately. 
And also we're trying to rate them on a scale of one to 10 on how difficult these items would be to implement and the cost to implement such uh, the, of these recommendations in these items. But um, Joe made some meaningful recommendations in his report and um, we did immediately act upon them, uh, several of them. And as I said, we do have uh, 14 that we've already addressed so far. And okay. the 14 is, I mean, you haven't, uh, has that been validated or, or, or how, how do you, um, how are we comfortable that the 14 have actually been addressed? Yeah, so uh, we've met with the department heads and also through uh, audit uh, policies and procedures, discussions with employees, discussions with department heads, um, and also uh, certain items that, uh, for example, updating the cash register. We had uh, the company come in, we had the cash register repaired and corrected and fixed. Uh, we established a, a pink voucher internal policy. We uh, already gave training to employees. We've already been acting upon them. Um, we've, we've already set policies to prohibit cash payments from being received at the DPW garage. Um, they've already started implementing meetings and it's commu communicating policies to the employees. Uh, and so forth. And actually, and on July 14th, they're um, going to be performing formal training in Munis, the financial system at the DPW garage. So, um, yeah, we already have physical and proof that these recommendations are being implemented and adhered to. Can I interrupt for one moment? Um, because I think um, our first select woman is now on the line, and I think she wanted to address us as well. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I had a new internet system installed in my house. This was my first time signing on with it, so I'm sorry for the delay. Okay, I wrote some comments and I was I was hoping to give them at the beginning, but I just got on. So I'm just gonna read um, some uh, statement to each of you and I hope that it will help as we move forward. And thank you, Connie, for listing some of the things that I wanted to mention, you did a good job. Uh, I just wanna say um, that uh, good evening. And I wanna say that in August of 2019, uh, this subcommittee commissioned an audit by the Department of Public works to review for the period of July 2016 through July 2019. This was before my term as first select woman began in November. And as we all know, much has transpired since then. In September of 2019, the former DPW director, Michael, Joe Michelangelo, was terminated from his position and was charged with second degree forgery, conspiracy to commit forgery, and illegal dumping of bulky hazardous waste as well as conspiracy to commit illegal dumping and illegal discharge of material. Scott Bartlett, the town's former superintendent of public works, faced, faces a long list of charges and was arrested in 2019 in August in connection with chemical contamination at the town's public work yard between 2013 and 2016. Legal documents show that concerns were raised about Scott Bartlett's performance as early as 2003. Of course, this is all very concerning in terms of where the management and oversight was for these individuals and the department as a whole. When I came on board as first select woman, I hired a new superintendent, Doug Novak. And as you know, Brian Carey has been serving as the interim super, uh, super Director of Public Works as well as Conservation. In my first few weeks in office, I had meetings with the state's attorney's office to discuss the ongoing criminal investigation. Many DPW employees requested meetings with me who, were had, who had grave concerns for their health and, for the, and were very disgruntled about the former mismanagement. We had HR, HR 
numerous HR issues bubbling up that were avoided for years. I terminated the employment of the HR director and the finance director. I hired a new HR director, a Jim Hazelcamp, who you've been, uh, who you've met, who came in and hit the ground running. He has 36 years of experience in many uh, bigger, even bigger municipalities than ours. And he has said to me on numerous occasions that Fairfield has some of the worst HR policies and practices he has ever seen in his 36 years. And he worked in Bridgeport. He is working diligently to make changes and recommendations to me, and we meet regularly. Soon after I took office, the budget process started, and then the pandemic hit. So while things have been delayed, including the criminal prosecution, I am still cooperating with law enforcement and awaiting further action. While we are also working to comply with DEEP and EPA notices, for the bill pile and numerous sites across our town. As for why we're here tonight, the 64 page audit that was commissioned by this committee and sent to my administration on June 19th has a great deal to digest and consider. To start, I have formed a working group as Connie alluded to, I caught there at the end, uh, between my office and the DPW, purchasing finance and HR to carefully review the report and identify what has already been addressed and what still needs to be addressed. The estimate, the length of time it will take to implement these suggestions and the costs associated with those recommendations will take time. From the first working session that Connie alluded to, we have identified 14 items which have already been addressed and one recommendation included road maintenance software system, which I think is a great idea, but I'm told it costs about $60,000. Another suggestion is for an Arbor Tree software that would cost between 60 and $100,000. Many of the recommendations, while they may be worthwhile, will be time consuming and very costly. And these will have to be carefully planned for and approved by town bodies. We are already working on the time clock system, the online permitting, and implementing credit card payments in departments that do not currently accept them. And as uh, Connie, I think you mentioned, we, we, we no longer accept cash at all. I want this committee and our residents to know that I understand that since this report was commissioned, we have new leadership. And I intend to reorganize, modernize, every aspect of our town government. Addressing potential issues in DPW and all departments in our town government is a top priority for me, and it will take time and persistence. But believe you me, I am working on it. Address, I very much appreciate the recommendations from, this, from the audit committee, and I take them quite seriously. When our working group gets further along in the process, I have some, I, and I have some substantial updates to share. I will come back to the committee and also share them with the town. And then I'll just open it up to any questions anyone has. Thank you. Um, I'll ask a question if no one else is going to. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that statement, Brenda. It's really encouraging and uh, appreciate the update. One of the things that struck us was that although the audit focused on DPW, many of the policies and uh, controls that are um, focused are, are of focus in the report really are apply townwide, right? So yeah, yeah. purchasing, for example, you know, this is, um, you know, that's a, that's a big nut in and of itself. And um, the auditor's scope was to look at DPW purchases, but I, I'd probably be surprised if they had a different result to say, you know, had looked across other departments. So, um, you know, I guess one thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, I, I appreciate your comments 
the cost benefit has to be uh, considered in terms of the priority of the recommendations and the risk has to be considered. Um, but as we look at the cost benefit, I think some of these recommendations and particularly those around purchasing, I, I think there has to be a recognition, right, that they're bigger than DPW. And I'm, I'm sure that there is, but I, I just wanted to kind of state that for the record. Um, is there anything, you know, we, we were talking before you got on and I, I think at least my, my thought process, and, and I don't want to speak for Jim and Mary, although we discussed it a little bit, was that the area of purchasing and the policies and procedures around that broadly was, you know, really the, the big thing that pops out of, he, out of this report for a number of reasons, right? There's an 18 recommendations of items that we should consider, and there was a pretty significant degree of noncompliance with our existing policies. And just curious, as your working group came together, what your you know, I know this is a 65-page report, but what your initial reaction was um, and if there was something that, you know, jumped out at you that you have, you know, concluded you want to prioritize immediately. So, I would say to you, Lori, um, even before the audit report came out um, and even before the pandemic hit, it was glaringly obvious to me that there was a serious lack of management in this in, in our town government um, on all levels. And it, listen, it comes from the top, and you have to provide training. There has to be policies in place for when employees don't follow things they're supposed to do. There is a whole there is a whole HR policy that is typical to any municipality. And our town was not following any of them. And so every single day I learned something new about changes we could make. So for example, I would just say that, and I don't want this to be a hit on our employees, our town employees, because frankly, we have amazing town employees who work really, really hard. But you have to invest in them and you have to have clear set guidelines of what they're supposed to be doing. Department heads have to know how they're supposed to handle the people under them. And when things happen, there is a certain process and how they're supposed to be um, handled. And in our town, there, is, there was no policy. So there is a lot of work to do. And I didn't even need to see an audit report to know there was a lot of work to do to begin with. But yes, there's some good things in here, but this is gonna take some considerable amount of time. And so we're going to start with the DPW, but there's other issues that we have to work on as well. And I have Hazel Camp working on a ton of issues. Um, I mean, he jokes to me literally once a week that he's not sure why he took this job because it's incredibly, I mean, I, frankly, we're not paying him enough because this is, this is a hornet's nest. It's, um, I, I, I look at it like a tangled ball, like when you're fishing, you know, all the line is just, there is a ton of things to do. And so we, again, we have amazing employees, but they just, we have to systematically change and just be like other towns, just have controls in place and follow them. This is not rocket science. This is just the fact that it wasn't managed. And I, I intend to work very hard to follow the things that we were supposed to be doing and making sure that all of our processes and policies are in line with other municipalities, that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And the working group, the working group will be working on this and we will be working a long time on this. In addition to that, um, I meet with the HR director uh, regularly with my administration and we are going through a whole host of things. And a lot of these things I can't uh, talk about um, on a, in a public meeting, um, but uh, we are working on quite a few things. There's a lot to do. Um, thank, thank you, am I muted? Okay, thank you, Brenda. Um, Jim, did you have a question? It, it comments and then a question, and thank you, Brenda, for your for your opening statement. I think um, just from listening to that, we're all on the same page 
on on the kind of the urgency that is put before us. And I think we all recognize that when something has uh, that any department as this one that has gone so far off track for many different reasons, it's not easy to put it back on. And I agree with you. You know, if you look at this report and you go to page uh, four, and we had referenced this in our last meeting as a committee, and you see everything that needs to be done, and then it's outlined, of course, in the rest of the uh, the report. And you're right. I mean, there aren't any written procedures, so people kind of come up with their own because what else are they going to do? Right. And everybody's kind of, even though they're all within one department, it's they're not together. Everyone's more or less working separately and doing their own thing to try and get their job done. And then from there, everything more or less, you know, it gets lost and your internal controls disappear if there was ever one in the first place. So this is, this is, um, I mean, it's more than a one-person job, but you do have to start with someone that's going to lead the department. And can you just update us on where you are at with uh, looking for a department head? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I am. Uh, I'm trying to do some reorganization. This is a bit tricky, so I'd prefer to speak about it offline uh, than online. Uh, but we do, I, we do have, I mean, the superintendent that I hired, uh, the interim, and then I took his interim uh, designation off, he has done, he's doing a really good job. He, he's a by the book, straight as an arrow, and he has brought a lot of leadership uh, to the Department of Public Works where there wasn't any for a very long time. And I, I mean, it's stunning, really. Um, it's stunning the way the department was managed. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, leadership matters, uh, especially with that amount of uh, employees. So he has done a very good job, and I am in the process of working through uh, getting, um, changing and making some reorganization changes. So I don't really want to talk about it too much as personnel issues, but I'm happy to talk to anyone offline if they'd like to. Uh, and I am posting a new position for um, a finance director and we just were working on that job description piece with my HR director and my administration. The finance oh, department does a lot of work, uh, and they have they have a connection to every department, and so they are very intricately involved with each and every department. And so it's important that 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 department has everybody it needs. You know, we obviously need a budget director, and so. And they're getting pulled in a lot of directions, and we I want to reorganize and make sure they are doing the work they're supposed to be doing for the town every single day so that we're not missing anything and everything is tightly controlled. Right, because I, I, along with, with the recommendations, there has to be accountability, right? And, and you know that. And the finance department is going to have to hold these other departments accountable to the internal controls and, and policies. Right. So, so when you say uh, the finance director, you, you you're going to put a a ad out for a CFO. Mm-hmm. A job. Okay. 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 Yeah. And I would like to personally, I'll just mention that I would like to have the CFO in place prior to hiring a budget director because I believe that that person would would should have some input into that uh, position. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, okay, um, one quick follow-up, Brenda. Um, do, do you plan to um, somehow try to reorganize the finance department to free Connie up to provide more time for internal audit work um, because of this report and implementing new controls? Well, to be honest, Mary, I, I think that I need to, I need not just finance, but I think all the departments, um, I've been work, I tried to do it and then the pandemic hit, but I was in the midst of working to sit down with every department to talk about, you know, restructuring and 
the finance department gets pulled in a lot of directions. And while audits are good and important, um, there is a lot of other things. So I'm not sure. Uh, I have to relook at all of these job descriptions because, well, I'm, again, while I think audits are good, I don't think there's a lot of things that we still need. They're very busy in that department. So it may be after I sit down with them and talk quite a bit, learning, you know, figuring out where are they lacking and where do we need the help? Because Connie does a lot of other things um, because there's a need. You know, there's a need. And so town business has to always come first. Uh, that has to be done. So we have to see, like even with the budget director, you know, are they, how, what's their percentage of doing just the budget and what is their percentage of doing other items that are required to be done? So that's a lot of work that we need to sit down and work through and, and decide, okay, what, what percentage of times do you need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then so on and so forth, and then come together and really hammer out what is the most efficient way we can have these positions filled and what amount of time for each position is going to be the most um, productive for our town government. So that's, that's a work in progress. And again, you know, unfortunately, I mean, I was really gung-ho and excited about doing this work. Um, the budget obviously took a giant amount of time suck out of everybody, uh, and then the pandemic. So we were planning so much to try to just offer, you know, basic services to our residents under a very, you know, highly charged situation. Um, and, and, you know, there's still a tremendous amount of planning still going on. But this is a big priority. I mean, this is, to me, a legacy for me. I want to get this done. There's there's a tremendous amount that needs to be fixed, and I intend to to get it fixed. But it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, this is this is really a lot of work, tremendous amount of work, and it's why I fought so incredibly hard to keep my CAO on. Um, because honestly, I mean, we could even use two more people to help us. This is a lot. I mean, there are a lot of departments, and there's a lot of things that we need to fix. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Vincent. Um, well, um, can I just follow up? Yeah, and just with regard to the um, to Connie's role, and Brenda, I don't have to tell you this. I I know you know it. I the, the reason I think for Mary's question is that you know having a full time internal auditor is a, a charter. I mean that that is one of the positions that's outlined in the charter, right? So we did. I know you haven't been to all these meetings, <laughs> uh, nor do you probably want to, but it, it is a concern in that Connie's percentage of time has been winnowed down to a very, you know, I think in her preliminary internal audit plan, which is, is probably now up in the air given this report and some other things, I think, Connie, if I have it right, you only had 20%, 25% of your time, something like that, allocated to internal audit, which, you know, we had a question on that from a charter perspective and just the perspective of, um, you know, is that the right thing to do? Given, you know, the audits that were done, there was definitely some value there in it. It can provide a roadmap for some, some really important issues. So I wanted to point that out. But I guess the other thing I'll just mention, and this goes back to um, a couple of questions that we had asked uh, Joe Santafani at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and we asked him about priority and what his recommendations were on priorities for, for you know, all of these uh, issues he raised. So he gave us some insight on how he did his ranking. Um, but there, are, and, and Joe, this is not meant to be critical. I'll, I'll just say there's, there's some judgment there. Um, and so it's not for us readily apparent. Um, we know in general, but it's not readily apparent, you know, why something is maybe a you know, ranked a two versus a four or whatever. So I would, I think what would be helpful for the Board of Finance, not just this committee, is as, as you guys, um, you know, put together the, the plan and we talked about a matrix where you kind of report updates on, on the progress and what's already been uh, addressed, it would be really helpful to understand your thought process. So for example, you mentioned, um, you know, one of the recommendations would require a technology solution that would cost $100,000, and that's just not in the cards. You know, it, it, it would be a nice to have, but the, you know, the ROI really isn't there. So just some, so there's, there may be some of these that 
the working group determines we just can't do at the moment, or they're going to be, you know, maybe considered down the road in another budget season. So just having that detail, I think, is, is really helpful um, to understand uh, how things are prioritized, because I'm sure there's other things in here, too, and we've talked about these with some of the um, audit and internal audit recommendations in the past. Some, sometimes a, an issue sounds alarming, but then you look at it and you find out that it involves a very small amount of money, for example. So, right. just, you know, having, having that, um, you know, ha having the, uh, I guess, the status report, if you will, laid out with the working group's um, thought process on how, how you got to the priorities, I would just say would be really helpful and appreciated. Because it's otherwise it's hard to no we're hard to make sense. Some of them are maybe worse than they are. No, I'm completely happy to do that. But you know, we I would just um, say to the committee that you know obviously you've got to give us some time. It's you know we we've got a lot going on in town hall, and we have we have to spend a considerable amount of time going through each of this. It takes a lot of hours, many hours of meetings. Uh, well, and, and that's why we're focused on the priorities, right? Because so we're gonna, we're, we've got the audit report, and obviously we have our own um, things that we observe being in the actual building and working every day there. So there's a lot of different things that we're putting together. But it's very helpful to me and my administration to have the audit report because it's going to be very, uh, you know, a huge part of our work as we, as my administration, tackles these issues as I'm supposed to be doing. So I, absolutely, when we have more data to be able to share. We're absolutely happy to share that with the Board of Finance. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have anything else for our first selectmen? Any other questions or um, we're fast running out of time. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Brent. No, I just, I guess, um, I guess. Just, just want to um, verify that both uh, our first select woman and Mr. Santafanti will be at our regular Board of Finance meeting and in a sense we'll be rehashing some of the same same stuff and get recommendations from the rest of the board. So, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah. Ms. Kupchak will be there and Mr. Yeah, and, and we're going to be discussing this in the beginning, Mr. Brown. Well, I have, I just have a couple of grants too that we just okay. want to get through for Mr. Mark, Mr. Sure. Marco, and then we'll move on to this. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll see you guys at 7:30. <laughs> Thank you I'll very be much. I'll be later than 7:30. Hopefully, I can get it on again. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, do we have any further questions? We have, I don't know, um, like four minutes um, for <laughs> Mr. Sensafani, or do we want to let uh, finish those back in the Board of Finance meeting later on tonight? Lori, you might. Sorry, just want, are we clear on the recommendations or, or, or what we're taking to the Board of Finance? Are we making recommendations to the full board? Um, Yes, well, so, sort of. Um, I don't know how um, complete they are yet, um, but I did send you that outline, um, and that's what I wrote down from our last meeting. So those are the topics I would like to discuss um, with the Board of Finance tonight. Okay. Yeah, I just think the couple, I mean, it's, uh, it's encouraging the progress that's being made. I think the question is, you know, if we have an oversight responsibility, how do we best do that? And I think we talked about having, you know, a report periodically to just give a status that indicates here's all the recommendations, here's who owns them, here's the timing, here's the progress, you know, when they're done, do they get re-audited, that sort of thing. So I think, you know, um, and ask for that. And the other thing we talked about was, uh, I think in our current policy, we're supposed to be looking periodically at purchases that are in small amounts to the same vendors, and we've never exercised that 
you know, that, uh, I don't want to say responsibility, but the, the right to do that. So, you know, that's probably an ask we should make. Right. Well, I think the whole purchasing policy needs to be reviewed and updated and probably first by our committee and then by the full board of finance. And yeah. I think a lot of the points from this report will go there. Uh, I guess the question is who should make the first pass at that, whether it's the town, whether it's a combination of the purchasing department and Connie as our internal auditor, or, or should it be like the Board of Finance itself. I think we, we should have the town do the first leg of that and then review it and um, try to make sure everything is, all the points are accounted for. I mean, um, I, I, would we, I yeah, I think we should talk about it. I think part of it depends on timing, right? You know, the town has, a, you know, if this working group has a lot of things on their plate, um, you know, Timing of how, when they can get to it versus getting some assistance from our auditors should be a consideration. And the other thing in terms of asking about, um, you know, that purchasing detail is, you know, realistically, it's, it's going to be a while before a fix gets implemented, right? So I, I would just say if we, you know, we should probably ask for that information um, just so that we have it and we all as a board have a better collective understanding of kind of what's happening. Because um, it's something that we've never looked at before. And, and I, I don't think we should, you know, that, that seems like something that you can run a report and it, it shouldn't involve a huge amount of time to, uh, you know, to get that to us. So that, those would be my suggestions um, for the Board of Finance. Okay, that works for me. Um, okay, uh, do we have anything else or should we move on to our next meeting? Um, any, Jim, did you have any comments or? No, okay. Um, so then I am going to take a motion to adjourn this meeting and we can talk further in our next meeting. Uh, uh, Lois made the motion. Uh, Jim, will you second the motion? Jim seconds it. Uh, so we are now on to the Board of Ed for a brief meeting, and then we will be back to the Board of Finance where we will discuss this further. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs>